had fires burning, people trapped in high-rise buildings. Although other pictures suggested most buildings had stood up to the earthquake as they're designed to, others had collapsed and it's impossible to imagine the number of dead from this won't be substantial. Also establish a special office to look into the damage to banks and other financial institutions. Geological experts have warned that while the tsunami roared west towards Japan, it's also likely to have moved north, and that means the southeastern tip of Russia near Vladivostok. There are warnings for other countries as well, as diverse as Taiwan and Hawaii. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. Okay, we bring you breaking news coverage here of the earthquake in Japan, an 8.8 magnitude earthquake striking the... Uh, east coast of Japan. We're looking at live pictures coming to us from Japanese television. Dramatic pictures showing a tsunami. We're not sure of the height of the tsunami right now, but it's going up the east coast of Honshu Island in Japan. This is around the area of Miyagi, which is on the east coast. Uh, there have been warnings from uh, the tsunami warning center that uh, the magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake could generate uh, a tsunami of uh, up to 20 meters in height. There was a tsunami of a meter in height which hit the east coast. We're looking at these pictures coming to us from Japanese television showing us a wave of water sweeping on land, sweeping everything in sight there. It's washed away cars and torn away at buildings right along there along the coastline. Our correspondent Harry Fawcett is in Kuala Lumpur. He's been monitoring, monitoring developments there. Harry, what's the latest you have there from the well, well, it seems, as you can see on, on, on air on these incredible pictures, the tsunami is uh, making its way ever further south down the coast of Honshu uh, towards Tokyo. Even in the last few minutes, we've had a report from the Agence France Press Agency that uh, the parking lot at the Tokyo Disneyland has been swamped by water. Uh, that's the first report I've seen, at least, of the tsunami uh, arriving in, uh, in a part of Tokyo. The, uh, the Disneyland uh, complex is just outside Tokyo to the east. Uh, on the, near the coast and the main uh, urban area of Tokyo. But nonetheless, that is the first report that we've had of the tsunami uh, getting as far as Tokyo. Uh, in terms of the casualties, uh, as Lawrence said in his report, it's difficult to imagine that they won't be substantial, but we haven't had any uh, firm numbers yet. Uh, we have heard of injuries at a graduation ceremony, for example, in Tokyo, when the roof caved in at that ceremony. Uh, that's according to the Tokyo Fire Department. Uh, no numbers there yet. Uh, reports of numerous injuries in Miyagi Prefecture. Uh, that's the Kyoto News Agency uh, reporting that uh, via their sources in the police in Miyagi Prefecture. Uh, Miyagi is the closest uh, Japanese prefecture to the epicenter of the, of the earthquake. Uh, we understand it was about uh, 120 kilometers off the coast uh, and the, uh, the, the first waves of water came, came ashore on Miyagi. It's, it's unclear exactly where these live pictures are coming from, uh, but if you can imagine this replicated all up and down that enormous uh, eastern coast of Honshu, uh, the, the damage and, and the loss of life, we can only assume, will be substantial. Harry, as we know, this uh, earthquake, the epicenter was about 125 kilometers off the Japanese coast. Now, let's try and put this into some kind of perspective. That east coast, where, which, have, which would have received the brunt of the earthquake, uh, Japan is a very dense, densely populated country. Uh, are we talking about, uh, along this coastline, are we talking about an area that is very densely populated? Uh, well, not as densely populated as the major urban centers uh, such as Tokyo. Tokyo is, is one of, if not the biggest city in, in the world, 30 million people about live in Tokyo. Uh, but there is uh, the main city of uh, Miyagi, Sendai, uh, has uh, well over a million people uh, inside its own uh, urban borders. And uh, all up and down the, uh, the eastern coast of Japan, or, or all around the coast, there are fishing villages uh, and small towns and cities. Uh, dotted uh, as far as you can as far as you can go. Uh, I've, I've visited some of them, and, and the, every little harbour will have another uh, small fishing port or a, or a village or uh, some sort of uh, of uh, human life. And so uh, you can only expect that this tsunami, although people were warned to get out, uh, you can only expect that people will have been caught up in, in the sheer scale of it. Now, in the past uh, hour and a bit that we've been talking, Harry, this uh, earthquake has been upgraded from a 7.9. That's what we were initially told was the size of the earthquake. It's been upgraded to an 8.8 .8 in magnitude. Uh, that, and, and as these measurements are done, they're done exponentially. They're not done uh, along a linear scale, along a sliding scale. So this would be a very big earthquake. 
Uh, certainly it is a, an enormous earthquake. Uh, it's bigger even than the, uh, the Kobe earthquake of 1995, which killed f about 5,500 people. Uh, that was a magnitude 6.9, so a great deal smaller than the one that we're witnessing here. Uh, it has to be said that that epicenter of the Kobe earthquake in 95 uh, was uh, really right on the shore of, of Japan uh, and so it, it, its, its effects were felt more strongly uh, in urban areas uh, but I think the, the fact that this is such a larger earthquake and that already we're seeing the kind of extraordinary damage being done by this tsunami uh, it must be uh, in, the same, in the same scale of, of, of a major disaster to have hit Japan. Okay, stay with us, Harry, just to uh, bring our viewers up to date. This is an earthquake that struck off the coast of Japan, 8.8 .8 in magnitude, struck off the northeast coast uh, of the uh, island of Honshu, which is one of the large islands in the center of Japan, Japan being a string of islands. The quake has prompted tsunami warnings. In some areas, the water levels could rise up to six meters, according to the uh, Tsunami Warning Center, which is based in Hawaii. That's the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Now, joining us on the line is Brian Shiro, the geophysicist at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, uh, which we've been talking about. Uh, Brian, what is the latest you have on uh, the kind of tsunami that could strike that rim of countries around the Pacific? Well, the tsunami from this earthquake, which has been revised upward to magnitude 8.9 now by the USGS, um, is certainly going to be damaging for the area around Japan. The tsunami warning is in effect for Japan and Russia, as well as, as, well as the Mariana Islands, including Guam and Wake and Taiwan. Um, the watch is spread out more along the uh, other Western Pacific and Central Pacific nations, but uh, we, we've already seen a sizable tsunami on the gauges that are reporting from the region. We, we measured one at three meters, for example, um, before the gauge stopped transmitting, which might mean the gauge was taken out by the tsunami. That happens sometimes. Um, our deep ocean sensor of the dark buoy um, detected a one meter tsunami, which is very high for a, such a uh, reading away from the coastline. So this is a sizable tsunami. We are monitoring very closely, and the models show that the tsunami um, certainly will get out into the wider Pacific Ocean, and it remains to be seen how, how the, the amplitude will decay as it spreads. But as you say, the magnitude of the earthquake has now been raised even further to 8.9. That's right, according to the USGS. Okay, give us an idea of what kind of tsunami, the size of the kind of tsunami that an earthquake of this magnitude could generate. Well, as you indicated uh, before, the, the, we could see size up to maybe around six meters in the area of Japan. And luckily, Japan has a really uh, sophisticated tsunami warning system. They have, uh, for example, gates that close off um, their, their rivers um, and canals that lead into the water that helps prevent the tsunami from traveling inland. Um, they have uh, tsunami sirens and, and tsunami uh, crawlers that go on their TV. So well, I think the citizenry of Japan is going to be fairly well prepared for this. The, the, the bigger worry, um, perhaps, um, for the tsunami itself would be the smaller nations around the Western Pacific, uh, some of them may not be as well prepared as Japan is for a tsunami. And of course, we're watching very closely. Um, being in Hawaii where we are, we're, we're very concerned with Hawaii too. So we'll be um, monitoring the situation closely. You know, Hawaii is in a watch right now, not in a warning. Okay, when you say prepared, what kind of preparations can the population make when they've got a six meter wave coming down on them? Well, in, for, for example, if someone's in Japan, um, they don't have much time because the earthquake um, and tsunami happened very close to them. So all you need to do is just get away from the water. And um, so I'm sure that's what they've been doing. So evacuate the area close to the water. And, um, okay, as, Brian, as just stay with us for a moment there. We're looking at some live pictures now of a huge wave which is moving along the uh, surface of the sea towards land. This wave, of course, generated by that earthquake, that 8.9 magnitude earthquake off the east coast of Japan. There's that wave moving across towards land. And uh, we have Brian Shiro with us from the Tsunami Warning Center. So, Brian, we are seeing a wave right now moving towards land. Um, you were telling us about the preparations that a population can make in the face of this water barreling down. Certainly. The, the best preparation is to have a plan ahead of time and to know where you're going to go in the event of a tsunami and to know where the evacuation zones are and where the areas are where you're going to aggregate and collect and, and find your friends and loved ones. And so, uh, like I said, Japan has a very good system like this. Hawaii does as well. Um, not every country does, though. So, um, you know, 
people are going to follow the best uh, plans they can. Um, but the general rule of thumb is if the tsunami happened close to you and it's going to be arriving soon, then get away from the water. Well, we know that That's Japan the... uh, is in a very uh, seismically active area. It lies along a fault line along the Pacific Rim, which is very active with uh, earthquakes. So uh, when people are warned that a tsunami is coming down, barreling down on them, they will be asked to move to higher ground, presumably. Yes, precisely. And, what and, and I, should, I should add to that, too, um, if you're in an area with strong buildings, like high-rises, hotels, condominiums, um, anything made of reinforced concrete, it's perfectly fine just to go upstairs in the building. We, the rule um, that we use here in Hawaii is the third floor or higher, and in that case, you should be safe. Now, we know that this earthquake has come uh, almost 48 hours after another earthquake struck that very same area in Japan, that one uh, measuring around 7.8, that was on Wednesday, earlier this week. So we could expect in the next few days more aftershocks. It's possible, yes. Uh, earthquakes tend to uh, happen along the same fault system, um, you know, related to each other, and it can be foreshocks or aftershocks and, and along the same sequence. Typically, aftershocks are not as large as the main shock, so we would not necessarily expect uh, you know, any aftershocks to be as big as this, but the problem is with an earthquake this large, the earthquake damage itself has, has certainly caused a lot of problems, and so even a relatively small aftershock could topple buildings, for example, so it is a big hazard. And when we're actually talking about the tsunami, this is a vast area of water that we're talking about, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, with the water level uh, decline and get lower as fur uh, further away from the epicenter of the earthquake? Um, well, the, the tsunami is a series of waves. So it's, it's a number of waves that happen in succession over several hours' time. And a, a wave, uh, as I'm sure you know, it consists of a trough and a crest. So uh, a low point and a high point. And so um, depending on where you are in relation to the wave, the high point, the, the crest may reach you, or the low point, the trough may reach you. And uh, either way, you'll see either a rise or a fall in sea level. And um, if you're lucky, so lucky to have the trough come first, that's the recession of the sea, that's your natural warning sign that something unusual is happening. It's probably a tsunami. Because I'm looking at the countries that could potentially be affected by the tsunami. It goes all the way up to Russia, Guam, Taiwan, the Philippines, Indonesia, as well as Hawaii itself. So that warning would be for all these countries. Currently, the warning is, is just restricted to the northwestern Pacific countries, including Japan and Russia and the Mariana area and Taiwan. The watch includes the other areas that you indicated, including Hawaii. Um, we define a, a warning as the area within three hours travel time, tsunami travel time, and a watch the area within six hours travel time. And but what, it could expand. Yeah, and what we're looking at right now are the waves just hitting the east coast of Japan so far. Yes, that's right, so far. Okay, what direction could that take? Well, the uh, tsunami energy, um, when it's imparted into the ocean, takes a really directional path. And so in this case, the direction the energy is going to propagate primarily is toward the um, toward the northwest and toward the southeast, roughly. So um, that's directly impacting Japan's coast and then directly going out into the central Pacific, uh, you know, in the direction of Hawaii. If we could put this into some kind of uh, perspective on recent earthquakes that have hit that area of the world, uh, we had the uh, earthquake and the tsunami, the Asian tsunami, which hit several years back. Uh, how big is this compared to that? Well, that, that was a magnitude, um, depending on whom you believe the uh, risk researcher is your favorite, uh, around a magnitude 9.3 or so, and um, certainly much larger, probably around uh, 500 to 1,000 times larger in energy. So um, we're dealing with a much different animal here with this tsunami. An 8.9 is very big, but it's, it's nothing compared to something in the mid-9 range, which is much, much larger. Okay, sir. Thanks for joining us. Let's go now to our correspondent, Harry Fawcett. He's in Kuala Lumpur monitoring the latest from there. Harry? Uh, well, as you're seeing, the, those pictures just coming uh, in from the east coast of Japan, 